Board, Nantucket Conservation Commission meeting for June 5th, 2019. Um, if you sign up to cell phones, we appreciate it. And if you're recording, please let us know. We are recording. Yeah, no, we're not. We are recording. Oh, we are. The, the, light, the, the light's, light's not, not working. working. <laughs> the Wi-Fi's not working. Wait, what's going on here? not working, but we are recording. The light that's telling us we're recording is not working. Okay, that's all. Okay, uh, we're going to have the uh, start with the public comment for items not being heard tonight. Seeing not, I went to the public hearing notice of intent. There were a few continuances. Um, the last family. Um, Nominee Trust. Oh, Nominee Trust. Uh, Trinity Walkwood Road is continued until July 3rd. Uh, Catherine S. Goldman Local Trust for Woodbine Street continued until June 19th. And the certificates of compliance. We have uh, Gallagher, 45 Millbrook, continued until June 19th. Town Nantucket, Hummock Pond Road, Milk Street to Cisco Beach, uh, continued until June 19th. And Worst and Old Quidden at Milk Route, continued until June 19th. Cambridge 10, Madawi Creek, um, there were two of them. They're both continued until July 3rd. And we have a reissue, we'll get to that. <coughs> right there. So, we're going to start with Booyah LLC, Nine Crows Nest Way. Thank you. Uh, for the applicant, Paul Santos of Nantucket Surveyors. Um, and this is a notice of intent application uh, for a proposed septic system upgrade within the buffer zone to an isolated vegetated wetland in a coastal dune. And while the application was filed under Booyah um, LLC, uh, actually ownership has changed um, since the time that we filed this application. Uh, the current owner being a Jacqueline Staines, trustee of Nine Crows Nest Way Unit 1 Realty Trust. So there is a new owner um, that had contacted my office and requested that we continue forward uh, with the request that we had been continuing under the previous owner, Bouya LLC. So the application is the same, ownership is different. Uh, this property, Nine Crows Nest Way, is an approximately 1.65 acre parcel. Uh, it's a developed residential lot that is, a, that is actually a condominium um, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 183A. So it's a two unit condominium. Uh, there is, if you look on the the application package, it shows it more clearly than on the plan that you have in front of you. Uh, unit two is an existing uh, four bedroom dwelling that sits nestled into the uh, coastal dune. And unit one, which is the application that is before you today, is a two bedroom uh, cottage uh, located closer to Crow's Nest Way. Each system is served by a single well. Um, there is a a deeded beach easement that runs through the center of the property, uh, which some of the owners along Crow's Nest Way have access or have rights in to access uh, from Crow's Nest Way through the property uh, to the beach. It's also a designated um, access point for emergency services under the town's program. The site itself is uh, again capable of supporting seven bedrooms under the local and state health code and currently the unit two which is the larger of the dwellings has four bedrooms unit one has two bedrooms there was a septic system upgrade issued for unit one which is the application before you in the mid 90s at that time uh, the system was replaced on the property uh, it was one of the first IA systems, actually, I believe, that went in on the island. It was kind of used as a test <coughs> case. It was a microfast, I believe, system uh, with a conventional leach field uh, that was on the property. At that time, this commission, or the Nantucket Conservation Commission, issued an order of conditions, SE 48-994, that's, that's in your package, and subsequently a certificate of compliance was issued for that work. So that work was for a septic system upgrade. That upgrade required variances from the Board of Health for the state and local uh, regulations. One was the fact that the system was constructed less than 50 feet 
to an isolated vegetated wetland. It was also constructed less than 10 feet to the property line, which are both uh, requirements under the state Title V. Title V setbacks from a septic system to a wetland is 50 feet, and from property line to septic system is 10 feet. So waivers were sought from the local Board of Health at that time and received to construct the system. They also came before this commission and received the notice of intent for construction of that system. And that's where the system that presently exists on the property exists today. Uh, it's within the 50 foot setback to an isolated vegetative wetland on the site, and it's less than 10 feet to the property line. The condition at that time, um, <coughs> part of the order of conditions, limited the bedroom count to the unit um, for those particular reasons, I believe, for unit one to be two bedrooms. They then, when they issued the certificate of compliance, further continued on that restriction, that, um, that the, the, the dwelling would be uh, no, more than, no more than two bedrooms. So since that time, there's been some different technology available to us with regard to septic system sizing, locations, and so forth. So what we are asking the commission to do is essentially allow us to provide an, a new upgraded system on the property in which we'd be able to achieve uh, three bedrooms for unit one. Uh, this would bring the total number of bedrooms to the site to seven, which is the max allowed under Title V, um, both local and state regulations. And in doing so, what we would do is reconstruct a system uh, by applying a, what's essentially a pressure dose system. So we would have, we would maintain the IA processor, maintain an existing pump pit, but we would essentially dose the system as opposed to a gravity, essentially a system that works as a conventional septic system. What the dosing does is essentially, it, it's a timed interval in which you are, instead of going into the system and just front end loading the system, you're essentially spraying over the entire system, um, a, a dosing the, the effluent. So if you look at the detail, you'll see, the piping that goes into the system has a series of holes in it in which once it's pumped to the system, it's sprayed out over a larger area. Um, so you have the combination in, you're allowed to do this with an IA system, and with an IA system, with a pressure dosing, you're allowed to reduce the size requirement of the actual leaching field um, under Title V. So you can make the field smaller uh, by utilizing both the IA and the pressure dosing. In doing this, we're able to now maintain the 50 foot setback from the wetland, so to be compliant with the state regulation. We're able to maintain the 10 foot setback from the property line. So we would now have a completely compliant <coughs> system under the state regulation. We however would not have a compliant system under the local regulation, both Board of Health and the Conservation Commission because you have a 100 foot setback requirement in your um, regulations. As does, as does the Board of Health. We are also, under this component, able to go with a uh, different type of profile system, which is a low profile system, in which we're able to increase the groundwater separation uh, to the system itself. Currently, the system is constructed within four feet of the groundwater. Um, we would then be, now be uh, have a five foot separation of groundwater, which again would now bring us into compliance with the local Board of Health regulation for this particular area. Uh, this area is not in one of the Board of Health's watershed protection districts, so it is a five-foot groundwater <coughs> separation, whereas under the state code, it's a four-foot separation. If you were in a groundwater protection district, you'd have to have a six-foot separation. So we have upgraded the system with regard to all these components. In doing so, what we are seeking is uh, permission to do this, but also for the permission for the commission to release, essentially, if you will, that two bedroom um, restriction that was placed under the original application. The site itself, the particular area we're talking about is not located within a mapped um, under uh, NHESP area under the Mass Endangered Species Act. It's not in a uh, flood zone. And that is uh, the application before you. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. The application still does require waivers under your local regulation because we are less than 100 foot um, setback to the isolated vegetative wetland. Uh, we're applying for this 
waiver under the premise that there'll be a long-term net benefit or improvement to the resource area. Uh, this would be the increased setback, the increased groundwater separation, and the improvement of the technology employed uh, to distribute the effluent uh, within the site. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. The Board of Health approved this. Board of Health has requested that we come here first before they approve so that, Because the restrict you have you you hold the this commission holds the restriction on the two bedrooms. So the Board of Health can't really do anything until this commission and this commission act. Sorry, go ahead. I'm a little uncomfortable with this just because we're going to be saying we'd allow more bedrooms on a dwelling that's in an area that shouldn't that shouldn't be. You know, it's within the 25. Right. Well, Is the historical I can't change well, opening that. the door because historically it's two bedrooms. So I, I don't know. But we're not. It's now, the, the current system that exists is just outside 25, right? I'm looking at the, it's the existing one here. It's is, outside yeah, the 25, but within the 50. Within the 50 yeah, right yeah. now. So. The, the, if you look on the plan, the light, the, yeah. the lighter area is the existing system. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. I'm and where does the lemon? Oh, the pump up the lemon. Oh, so it's the same field. Mm -hmm. it yeah, it's a, it's a it's a functioning. Yeah. The system functions right now. It's an it's an operating system. They've had a valid contract for the IA system. You know, since it's gone in, yeah. um, it's maintained. It's functional. Again, this is nothing more than it, it's a functioning system. It's nothing more than the attempt to, with a different technology, achieve that third bedroom. Achieve the third bedroom and actually in a smaller. In a smaller so footprint, right. yeah. yeah. Would, Paul, would you say that uh, the technology that exists now? When was this originally put in? Mid nineties. So I would, I would say that the technology now is much better. So even adding a bed would potentially be a lot less impact with a number of operating systems. Is it the same processor that you're using? No, it's the same. It would be the same process. I think we still use the same. That processor that's there is actually a processor that's certified for five bedrooms. So, as I said, I think it was one of the first ones that went in on the island. Um, so the processor is still there, the pump would still be there. It's, it's the pressure growth. It's, so what you got is the, the IA is, is treating um, the gray water, and then the distribution is putting it, spraying it essentially, if you will, and, and distributing it over a, a, a more even area of the system. As opposed to on, on a gravity system or on a conventional system, what happens is the front end of the system gets majority of the effluent that that's where it's going to fall and hit it doesn't really mm -hmm. it's not really so it's getting aerated too. it's getting aerated process yeah. so it's it's, yeah. it's advanced in that and the, the seven bedroom um, requirement is essentially a function of the fact that the site has a well so on the local and state it's one bedroom you're allowed one bedroom for 10,000 square feet of lot area so the lot area is 71,749 so you would have uh, the ability to have seven bedrooms that's that's where the seven bedrooms is coming from is there any, I mean, maybe this is forthcoming, but uh, is there any expansion on this house? I would assume that, that, that I, I haven't spoken, quite honestly, I've, I've only had a conversation with the attorney for the new owner, but I would assume that the cottage is, the intent was to get the third bedroom, was to either maybe potentially go on a, with a small loft or something like that up above, mm -hmm. but I would expect yeah, uh, yeah. the answer to that is yes. So Which is completely independent, obviously, of what this is. Right. right. Uh, so, so the system's fully functioning right now? Yes. Yep. Is this seasonal? Yes. It's, yeah, it's a seasonal use. What's this? What's the start of time for these? I mean, how many times does it take these to get up to speed in this, with the uh, advanced septic systems? Well, you know, I mean, there's such there's bacteria build up. Oh, that I, I wouldn't. I don't. I mean, I think they're, they're functioning. They're they're tested on a yearly basis. So as soon as they're in, one, they're always they're testing on a yearly basis. Yeah, I'm just saying uh, when you have like a dormant period in a, like a seasonal house, and then yeah, people moving. At what point does it does it actually start to really? You know, that I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of my concern with some of the seasonal stuff. How much it takes for people to come out for a week and then leave? I think that was a 
yeah. after they get up to speed. And the full process. And the, uh, the motors have to be running all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, I was there today, and that, and that just, it was running. It was kicked out. Yeah, so there was, was nobody like, in there. There was nothing going on. So there's like a lot of activity going on in there. I have one of the panel fires. <coughs> it's a fan. It's always running. Oh yeah. 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 So you keep it dry. It just aerates it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Like, well, I think it, yeah, you want the bacteria to also stay active. And then what, I mean, bacteria are getting fed. Yeah. So what, then they're not going to be there. Yeah. Um, other questions? There's no better place on the lot to uh, get a sun to. No, it's, it's kind of hot. Everything for the water is focal boom. The existing four bedroom house that's there is actually within the that's a, that's a conventional system um, that was inspected just recently. It's fully functional, but that's um, no, this this that's the that's this is the only area on the lot. Groundwater flows towards the ocean. This area, yeah. And as I said, we're just outside, so I think the harbor watershed is. Yeah. Along the other side of Crow's Nest, down towards Walt Winnet, we're outside of we're outside of that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? Please. For the record, Attorney Aaron, the reading I represent the Evans family owns the property of Seven Crows Nest Way, uh, immediately adjacent to this property and, and specifically adjacent to the portion of this condominium lot that uh, uh, involves this proposal. Uh, I actually was involved in representing the former owner of the property, not, not the most recent former owner, but the owner at the time that the uh, order of conditions was issued uh, back in. Uh, uh, 1996. Um, Nancy Colson, different hands since then. The uh, issuance of that order of conditions was not an easy process. It involved the fact that the septic system was being placed again, no better place to put it, but it was being placed in close proximity to wetland resource areas. Uh, and uh, as, as part of that process, the Commission was concerned that there not be any future expansion. And specifically included in the order of conditions, the language in uh, condition uh, 18 in SC 48994. The septic system for the cottage on the property shall be limited to the flows allowed for two bedroom dwelling. No, and no is in bold face, expansion shall be allowed in the future. This condition shall be ongoing and not expire with the issuance of a significant compliance. The certificate of compliance referred to that once again. Conditions, and in this case, condition that was accepted by the previous owner and the system was built on the basis of that, these things have consequences. And when a condition of that sort to allow something that otherwise presumably would not have been allowed, it was, it was difficult to get it allowed, <coughs> that condition we feel should be respected and continued forward and not set aside. Uh, uh, you know, if we were coming in today with, a, with the same situation, we'd still have concerns about the fact of proximity. This is not something where you're dealing with on your, within 100 feet, but you're well outside the 50. You're, you're, you're inside the 50. Uh, and uh, on the basis of that, we feel strongly that the condition uh, should continue forward and that the property should not be allowed to have additional bedrooms. That was basically the deal. That was the way it worked out with the commission at that time and that should carry forward. Thank you. Thank you. It does pretty much look like an unbuildable lot. I mean, oh, yeah. Frankly, I mean, they don't really have room for a house on the lot, let alone a septic system. No, it is pretty clear in those conditions that no expansion shall be allowed in the future. So I know I'm uncomfortable with it. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it. Um, I do like the more advanced treatment that it's just like it. Yeah. I want to go into the system. 
I, I, if I could just say one thing, this, Please. this this was not at the time that Arthur did the permitting. This wasn't new construction. This was a that, this was, that was actually a repair in '96 mm -hmm. of an old barrel block, a barrel yeah. cess, uh, cesspool that went into an old leach pit. So that was an upgrade. Even at that, at the '96 was an upgrade. So that everything was here. Yeah. That that system was the house was there. It was an upgrade at that time. So it wasn't a new construction component at that time. Because the whole lot was an L from that time too, and the price of the condo uh, not, doesn't meet the standpoint of town permitting, uh, but uh, uh, you know, it's been limited to um, uh, this part of the block. In any event, that was a condition that was applied at the time. I say it was contested, not contested, but it was, uh, the commission was very much concerned about it. Yeah, I can I see that there are concerns yeah. in the future. I hope that I was set up as well. Yeah. Um, that's good. Other comments, questions? Any more questions from the public? Do we have everything in the We do. Unless there's any other information or yeah. comments or anyone wants to bring in. Yeah. We're not voting on it. I mean, yeah. this is the notice of intent. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on a second. 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 Closing. No, 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 we're all no, I'm fine with the closing. Right. No, we're all we close right. and then right. and then he asks. We'll get to that part. We'll, we'll do yeah. that vote when we get to the yeah. order. Yeah. 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 I think it's closing. Right. Okay, cool. After yesterday, everyone's ready to. Are we ready to ready? Yeah. Conservation Commission is ready to rule. It's like Judge Judy. Oh. Because he stole my plan. Okay. So, um. Oh, it's just. It's the star. He's trying to chase down his plan. This is way worth watching on TV. Okay. Are we ready to start the next one? Are you guys going to start? Okay. Uh, Town Nantucket, Jetty's Beach, Playground, the end of Jetty's Ave, and Children's Beach. Sure. So I'll, I'll kind of start it and I'll let Chaz give you an update. Um, we are still in the, the throngs of dealing with natural heritage for this site a bit. Um, and that's kind of what we had continued for last time. Yeah. So if you want to it at all feel free good evening um, so as we discussed last time uh, the high school was building two of them I put at the uh, <coughs> beach and also close side beach um, they have completed that they have the remaining parts of theirs um, and be delivered uh, from KPW over to the site that's over by Jody's right now um, and we're going to give them a pizza party as a celebration for the work. Um, it's kind of uh, I mean, going through the proper That's process, cool. went through finance, got the approval. So uh, kids are excited about that. Um, but aside from that, now I'm also meeting the contract for the other two pieces. We do have contracts with them, signed by them. Um, we gave them a notice to proceed to start constructing because we're obviously short on time because this seems to be uh, put in place by June. We understand we, we have HDC approval, we don't have contract approval, we understand that, but we didn't want to lose any daylight um, on the needs constructed. So it's absolutely critical, obviously, in front of that. Um, so my question is, is, out of all four of them, are we not able to put any of them up at any point in time, or just only one location or two locations? <coughs> all right, so I'll, I'll try to take that one. So the easy answer to that is the the notice includes all of them. So I think what we'd like to do in the interim, and just to, as a thought, 
um, is to try to get Heritage to just release the other three and just say, we don't care about those. Um, and maybe authorize them to start work. We could put together the conditions and then deal with the jetty site separately for the the area that's in question with the birds. Um, but I think if it's okay, since we'll obviously have to continue, that maybe if we could, I know this is not going to be a popular choice, but given a little bit of time, that we may be able to take it up on next Wednesday, the twelfth meeting, a little five-minute discussion. It won't be long. I don't think. So, yeah, so you, yeah, sorry, are we waiting on the over? We're waiting on Heritage. Heritage. Heritage is having some issues with jetties because jetties is between the restaurant and community sailing and yeah. having active birds nesting on the site. Yeah. Our, uh, I mean, literally today, our bird monitor was taking pictures and sending them detailed descriptions of the boat carts that the kids use to move the sailboats from the dune line to the water for them. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we're seemingly send them as they get confused about what the activity is until today. They thought that community sailing was driving vehicles to their site multiple times a day, despite the fact that everything we send them says they get escorted on for the install of their sheds. And then that's the last time a vehicle hits the site until after September. So they're having some issues with the activities. And unfortunately, they're holding that application a bit hostage still and the town one hostage still. Um, I mean, they were dealing with the, the electrical install for the back of the Jetty's building. I mean, they reluctantly let that go because they, I think they kind of saw the light on that one. But it's, I don't know why they're making it so difficult to that level of caring. And they're concerned that the site's not being managed in accordance with the state and federal guidelines mm -hmm. and they want reassurance that the town is doing it and said, well we have to do it because that's the rules there's not a choice and they want us to memorialize this management plan that includes things like dogs released on the site but I'm like we've provided you copies of our bylaw that says that they have to be leached on all public property not just on protected species so why are why can't we translate that from site to site and that's been the hassle with them for like a year and a half on explaining to them what happens at that site. So um, I hope we're close if we're down to sending that in. So that's, we've impressed upon them that we're in kind of a critical time frame for, for these things. Um, for this project and a couple other things, this one more critical time-wise than others. So hopefully before next Wednesday, we can at least get something that stops with children's cliffside and the jetty's playground area so so is there any way we can move forward with the other group besides jetty's beach um is there any way yeah we're kind of stuck until that happens so does that also apply for children's beach too yes One application here. but i think if we can get that at least released by the 12th then you can start on the 13th yeah, um, yeah, do you have like funding deadline yeah i mean like that? so Here's where the crux of this. It is um, so finance. So Brian Turbin. So we're in a kind of a tight fund. The only way we get the money for it um, is for the for these boardwalks to be installed, built and installed in place. And have, then there has to be a time for the money to come for reimbursement to close out for the end of the fiscal year. It is Which tricky, and, and I'll be the first one to say this is not a pretty situation. Jeff and I talked about it. God bless you. I appreciate everything that Jeff's been trying to do to help out. This is something that should came to you guys months ago, um, and we're talking about back in January or February at least, um, if not before then, because we're talking about planning and doing this the right way. This should have came a lot before that. Um, but the town's kind of in a in a, in a bind now because we've been approved for this grant. They had to go through a select board and get a signature and all that, and that was back in March. Um, in the meantime, we were trying to figure out the execution plan for this. We were going to try to have back in March and the kids do it all, and they just didn't have the time for it. Mm -hmm. So then we realized financially, plus I had to be within the time of the budget constraints as well. So the only way we could get this accomplished 
with us to get have the kids build two of them. So we did. They're the larger structures, but they're the more uncomplicated ones than the ramps per se. Just for looks, they built a lot of these before in the past, but just smaller. Now we just had to get them bigger dimensions. And they've done that. And they've done it successfully in a very short time. Meanwhile, we've been bogged down with trying to get the contracts uh, written, make sure the scope was written, make sure it's uh, applied. Um, and uh, so we've got that done. As of last week, we've moved forward. Now, the contractor, I would move with them at Children's Beach Farm to make sure we have the layout. And uh, I, I truly believe that we have to obviously protect our natural environment. So we've got masters in the environment. So that's all we get. I know some of the medical condition here that they're trying to provide stable uh, boardwalks for people with disabilities to enjoy the beaches. I think that's important to um, I think that it's, if the time frame is, that's not uh, really good for us. I guess that's the plan. I mean, I think we're all so I, I think that the, the temper I know it's not ideal for anyone is if we hold it to the 12th and draft a positive order for it and try to at least get the first three out the door and then fight about the jetty site and if we get really lucky get all of them squared away mm -hmm. by next Wednesday to just Issue with that day, so then you can start construction or start installation. And I should also add, um, because of the recent events, which isn't for the boardwalks, but uh, one of the concerns we had at the at the Jetty's playground was there's some kind of jungle gym that's there, and it would be five feet of a setback, um, which is you know, a safety concern. Well, because of the recent event that happened with Tom Nevers, unfortunate child that got injured um, just a couple of days ago. DPW just spent the last few days doing an assessment of all of the our playground equipment, and we're going to be removing quite a bit of it right now. It's just most of our playground equipment is unsafe um, for us, and so we're going to be starting tomorrow to remove a lot of this, including the jungle gym at the Jetty's playground, which will no longer be an issue with a setback for safety. So we are taking a proactive approach. How can we make these the playgrounds, which are the <coughs> property, more safe? Starting to mobilize and starting to move on and stuff. And then we're developing mass plans for the new model. Well. Uh, that's going to be good for the beaches if you're an avid at beach. That's going to last a long time. And these boardwalks are going to be fit around the beach boardwalks, which are temporary, but make sure we have space for them on the beach side. So we're looking at a big picture of the conference. So thank you very much for understanding what the position was. Yeah. Okay. So. I think so. So I think if you guys are, are willing to, to take it up on the 12th, we can add it to that agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You very much. I don't think it'll be a long discussion, and I'll, I'll be fair. I'm not even sure that when you can be present for it if you want to, but I think everyone's pretty straightforward right. that it's we're, all, we're yeah, waiting we're all, yeah. for just, heritage. Yeah, just the formalities. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so formalities. Uh, that's up. Uh, well, so so, so to, to the 12th. Okay, so well, <laughs> at the rate it's going, I'm going to be making a field trip to Heritage in between there to sit there in person. Is there a time frame? Yeah. 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 No problem. Thanks, guys. Well, we monitor that site for birds between five and seven times a week, like daily. And it's probably the most monitored site on Nantucket, but. Uh, I will, since we're being recorded, I will leave my opinion <laughs> to myself. Okay, um, okay so uh, Olaf Blossom, 30 Eel Point Road. So I'll, I told Brian I would handle this one because we ended up having some things to get out of here to make it. We continued this one last time for Heritage and we received their sign off on this. But as you can see, this was just for about last time this is for a new section of shell drive one and garage with the garage inside of 50 and the driveway inside of 25 and some minor grading pad around it this right here and if you didn't have any questions there give those instructions for positive for the office of the city for that heritage side of it. Okay. Any questions?
Uh, any public. questions in the public? Right. Okay. We have everything. So now. Now. Motion to close. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Close. Very good. Thank you. Okay, 77 Pacamo LLC, 77 Pacamo Road. Uh, for the applicant, Art Gasparo. I am uh, representing the application on behalf of Jeff Blackwell, who uh, filed it. I have reviewed and uh, gone over the proposal uh, with him, as well as all the materials, and I'm familiar with the, uh, with the property in the area. <coughs> the um, uh, project before you is a uh, notice of intent for work within the uh, underfoot buffer zone to the Coastal Bank. There was a previous um, determination of applicability issue uh, not too long ago for the removal of structure that was there. And uh, this proposal is essentially residential redevelopment of, of the property uh, and located within the uh, buffer zone. It's, it's proposed a, a pool and a patio and um, to continue to maintain the uh, on kind of the, most of the structures outside of the 50 and um, uh, the septic, excuse me, most of the structures outside of the 100, all of the structures outside of the 50, and the septic system also outside of the jurisdiction. And then we have to do that with those questions and concerns outside of the area. Questions? I'll say, wait, there's, there's no pool fence shown. The fence that's being shown there yeah. is. They can easily keep it up. Existing. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, that's still existing. It's still fence, fence. shown. Uh, yeah. With our client, so there is no yeah, pool fence that's been yeah. proposed. So they would have to modify the approval. I um, talked to Jeff, and he had only received the limited land fee plan, mm -hmm. which was included with the application. So at this point, we're happy to assume that it's going to have a, a cover, and if they decide to go to Fence. If the fence is going to be in your jurisdiction, come back to you. I suspect it'll probably be back to you at some point for a minor mod, perhaps. So, if, you know, if they want to do additional land, other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the public? We do. Motion. Close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, Eric Asante, 41 Long Pond Drive. Perfect. Go for it. Welcome aboard, by the way. Good, good try. Asante. Good evening, Commission. My name is Cameron Larson with Environmental Consulting and Restoration. Here tonight, to uh, represent the applicant, Eric Asante, to present to you the notice of intent for 41 Long Pond Drive. It's a single family home lot located to the north of Long Pond Drive, the corner of uh, South Cambridge Street there. Uh, as it exists, there's a single family home on the property, gravel driveway, um, maintained lawn, landscaped areas, there's a deck to the rear, there's also an existing shed to the rear. Um, BCR performed the wetland delineation of the site. We located a bordering vegetated wetland, which I highlighted in green here, along the northern portion of the property. Uh, we also located the inland bank to a small pond. It is within the limits of the wetland. We just located it for reference. The wetland itself is the landward most resource area um, with an associated buffer zone. Um, buffer zone showed there, uh, also in green, extend across the site. Um, what we are proposing tonight is to construct a new shed to the rear of the property. Um, as I mentioned, there is an existing shed there, so this new one will be in the same general footprint. It will be slightly larger. Um, the entire shed will be located, though, within the existing footprint and existing maintained lawn in that portion. Um, the existing <coughs> shed will be relocated outside of the 100-foot buffer. Um, we'll be using uh, erosion controls be installed prior to the start of any work. 
uh, any disturbed areas after the proposed work is complete will be uh, restored to as long as they currently exist right now. So if you have any questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay, this is the this is the new. Yes, the this larger shed is the, is the uh, new one located within the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the shed located outside is the one that will be. Well, that's where the existing shed will be relocated. Other questions? Any questions from the public? It's nice, simple. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do you have everything in order? We do. A motion. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Request for determination. Yeah. 13 B. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. They're the same as the ones I got. So. Yep, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Then, uh, uh, an engineer for me, sir. No. Um. <coughs> Good afternoon. Mark Rich from Site Design here with Dan Malloy representing the applicants at 13 Ginger Lane. Uh, we discussed this at the last meeting. It's a proposal to construct a retaining wall outside the buffer zone to an off-site wetland and to perform some grading of the fill on the upland side of the wall. Uh, the proposed wall is separated from the wetland by a residentially developed property including a house, a pool, a driveway, <coughs> various landscaping, etc. At the last meeting the Commission asked us to go back to our client and see if there was uh, any desire to relocate the wall to a slightly different location. Uh, we did so, and our client would like us to request the wall pretty much where it's shown on the plan, approximately a foot off the property line. So here we are, uh, once again, requesting to construct that wall outside of the 50 foot buffer, which is something that is uh, routinely permitted by this board in, in many, many other locations. So um, that's basically it. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Questions? Thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great neighbor. Yeah. yeah, the guy was worried about that from the streets. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> you might entertain a worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Mr. Wade is here. Right? So, I'm um, Go ahead. I mean, I don't no, no. uh, You know, it's a, probably a proactive thing. Yeah, it just depends on where this lands relative to the to the wall. I mean, these trees aren't really something that should be protected. The, the rare or endangered species. Um, this is just a neighborly thing, you know. Sure. So it's I like, I, and I mean, I think that from a from a from the standpoint of potential hazard. Now, nobody's asking my opinion, but from a potential hazard, I think it's just kind of obvious that if that wall goes in, it's going to cut all the roots on that one side, it's going to destabilize these trees that are not too stable in the first place, and um, they'll be vulnerable, so, you know, Phil Manila might be down the road uh, having a difficult time with their neighbor, but um, what can be done? I'd say some, some root pruning, you know? But jurisdictionally, what they're asking for is fully within their scope of, you know, what's That's reasonable. Okay, I don't know where you will. What kind of Leland site? They're Leland site, that's correct. I will. Okay. Well, let me open it up for the public. Go ahead. So I'll open up public access. Yeah, please come on up. Is that a fun? Get to the good Huh? Get to the good of this? This is what happens on back to back meetings. Everyone gets all punchy. David White, I'm here on behalf of the Butter and Pennsylvania Westchester Group. I came a little more prepared this time. I have lots of notes. Unfortunately, I write like a lawyer and I can't read them. And there was a beam sea on the way over on the boat and I made the writing a little worse. So we're going to keep this more simple. Uh, just not quite as simple as the I think it's important for the commission to have a picture of what's going on there rather than just 
oversimplified things that we're talking about, a, what they're calling a four foot retaining wall and a little bit of backfill. This is uh, what the HDC approved here. Another one here. Let's go on here. down here. Okay, the retaining wall is not shown there because they came here first for the retaining wall. Uh, we have two issues. It's not really just the tree. The tree roots. We have an issue where if the committee, this commission, were to um, give a positive determination and allow the wall, uh, the wall can't be constructed where they want it without access to my property. It's going to be impossible. One foot off the slope. So it's important. To, I mean, I don't know if anyone's been up there, but it's important to really understand what's happened up there. So at the back of my property, at the rear of the property at 47A Westchester Street, 10 years ago, it was a slope like this. Now it's a slope that goes like this, okay? Uh, we know how it got there. The town engineer was up there today. He's of the opinion that the uh, slope is so uh, stable, sorry. Uh, so I guess the question is, is a wall even needed? What's the purpose of a wall? If, it's, if the slope that you create is already stable. If a wall is needed or okay for them to do, which has been done many times before, um, I would agree that they should have a wall. The difference here is, one foot off the property line, they're not going to be able to do it without access to my property. There's going to be a six foot uh, footing. They're going to need the, what is it, the silk, the silk fencing. They're going to need to put in uh, forms and overdig for the forms. There's going to be a trespass issue. There's going to be dirt that falls on my property. The roots are going to get dug up. And for the commission, although you know, Say that it's a neighborly thing, it's not just a neighborly thing because if you issue a permit for them to go build a wall, it can't be built without disturbing my property and potentially killing the trees and opening the owner who is not from Manila, his daughter. Uh, so, all sorts of liability under statutes for trespass, for killing the trees, for um, except all the statutes and maps are very clear on the trees. They can cut back the roots, they're on their property, but if they choose to do so, and the trees are substantially damaged or killed. They can be liable for trouble damages, three times the damages. There's uh, imprisonment, there's imprisonment for trespass, their contractors will be liable, the owner will be liable. So there's a whole other can of worms that's gonna get opened up here uh, on the civil end. But I do think it is within the jurisdiction's committee, other commission, otherwise it wouldn't be here, right? It's inside the 100 foot buffer. They're asking to be able to put it uh, on the property line, they can't construct the wall. They don't, they're going to need a, probably a construction business here. So it's either don't build the wall, to me, it's either don't build the wall or push the wall back. There's also an argument that if they do build the wall, it's a structural wall, which now makes it subject to the five foot setback requirement. Well, that's, a, that's a building department. I mean, yeah, that's right. And there's a lot of there. this, unfortunately, I mean, for the situation, doesn't. Agreed. We'll save those arguments for that. So I think okay, that's why I'm not a better group of people. Agreed. We'll save those arguments for civil litigation, for the building department, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, they're looking for a permit from this commission to build a wall that they can't walk to build. They can't build it without access to my property. They, there's not going to be a surgical incision made to create these forms. It's impossible. Where are the workers going to walk? Where's the filtration fencing going to go? Under our rules, was the fill up approved with the mounder? I mean, it's had, I mean, when you did the planning board, you must have known. Yeah, so that's a good question. I mean, I don't know that they ever came for a permit for the fill here. The town engineer seemed to believe, we believe that that would be part of the subdivision approval. I'm not concerned about this at all. Uh, maybe you guys are, but I'm not. I just want to make sure that the wall is either pushed back so it doesn't fill the trees, that our screening barrier to screen the home from the slope. Uh, or there is no wall. Um, so I do feel that it is within the jurisdiction uh, to rule on this. Clearly, we wouldn't be here. It's just that um, we have permitted, and we do very often permit retaining wall. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so that is just, it's kind of standard. Uh, it could be legally built. This one that, well, that's, well, that's not, not going to have to go to court on that, sir. We're well, not yeah, a, yeah, we're not a court of law. We yeah. have a certain set of regulations that we adhere to, and, and what you're talking about, 
I didn't hear one of them. Yeah, the fact that they, yeah. they can't build it is, is sort of immaterial to our performance standards, really. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's kind of, yeah, they're going to have to run that up, you know, run that through another channel. Yeah, I mean, I respectfully disagree. And I'd like to put it on the record that I disagree. And if they give them, if the walls, they get permission from the conservation to build the wall, if necessary, we'll build the superior court. Your that's your right. Yeah, it is. I mean, we totally understand. Um, but for us to yeah. follow, great. Uh, make, sure you to to make sure that your client, your actual client, takes a look at that. Any other questions for me? No. no. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much for your professional opinion. Yeah, that's it. The trees that's will be damaged and could potentially fall. And could potentially, you know. Yeah, and yeah. cause. Uh, Property damage and personal uh, injury. Thank you. Uh, okay. Were you submitting this for our record or uh, for record? So. <laughs> sure, I just need to, yeah. if you're submitting it for our record, I just need a copy of it. Yeah. Yeah. You guys already have these, right? Yes, and yeah, he, he, he did email me a copy of that plan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the public? Okay. Uh, Jeff, we have everything you need. You do. So this is a request for determination. Oh, so great. Thanks. This isn't Thanks. something where you're closing the closing right. hearing. Yeah, so right, right. the 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 choices you would have here—they're not seeking resource area determination. So you could issue either a <clears throat> negative three, allowing for the work without the filing of a notice of intent. Um, or if you wanted to discuss it further, the opposite one of that, I never remember the correct number off the top of my head for the negative three, um, is you could require the notice of intent if you wish to. So that would be a positive three that described the you know, area subject to protection um, and would require the notice of intent. Yeah, uh, that pertain to our regulation. Yeah, pertain to our regulations or whatever regulation. I'm not super familiar with this, but I know that when I went through this for my property, there were in order there's an order of conditions. There's ongoing orders sometimes. Who's going to monitor the, this to make sure the trees don't get killed? How am I, how am I going to prove what's happened? I mean, can we issue a, an order that requires some level of monitoring? Require a bond be posted. Sure. So you guys do have the ability with a, a negative three to put some conditions onto it. It doesn't work the same as like an order of conditions where you can create giant lists of conditions. Um, but if you feel that there is something that you need to protect the resource area and the buffer zone, you certainly have the ability through a request for determination to put a condition of that nature on it. Of plant life, right? And animal, and wet and wetlands. I mean. People are bringing forward, so I have a guest up there that tree comes down on. I wish there were native trees. Yeah, native trees. <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, well, the native oh, trees that I replanted that are commissioned this year all knocked them over. Yeah. So, well, keep in mind too, uh, again, not to yeah. remember when, when you condition it, you need to condition something or review it in a way how it impacts the interest protected yeah. by, the, by the bylaw and the act. So that's kind of part of the Part of the question as you're you're weighing into it, and I wouldn't discount you know contributing vegetation to things like wildlife habitat and, and those kind of things, but I think you have to think of it in the holistic sense for how it's impacting the the defined interest in the in the act and the bylaw. But you can condition, so it's it's up to you guys forever you want to do. So when we left here last two weeks ago, you suggested that we try to work it out. So that even that very evening, I sent an email to the applicant's representatives. Uh, and then I heard back yesterday, and the proposal coming from the applicant was that they would allow me access from their property to remove the trees and replace them with a different type of tree. So I'm worried about my trees getting killed, but the compromise was for me to go in and have them removed and by using their property. This is what we're dealing with. Yeah. This is, this is, 
this is a whole different realm for us. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess my thought is maybe we would want to notice just because there's such a long line of silt fence that's required here, mm -hmm. you know, and to make sure that that stuff is maintained and adequately. Yes. Yep. Um, totally. Because we are within 100 feet of yep. the resource area. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then that goes back to if they can't maintain it. Right. If they can't put it in place to do the work, then, then it's it just a little bit more. Well, you guys still, I mean, you don't, <clears throat> let me try to help you. That maybe you can condition siltation fencing and things and put conditions for it through this, but you also still never, even through issuing, whether it's an order or determination of applicability, still don't lose the general provisions of enforcement mm -hmm. through the through the act and the bylaw. So even if someone has a valid order for the initiative, they're not in compliance with it. The first checkbox on an enforcement order is not in compliance with the issued order or determination of applicability because it happens, I don't want to say it happens a lot, but it happens from time to time where someone's site that has a permit just gets out of sorts and you can still issue a regular enforcement. So there's lots of options available to you guys. Uh, I, mean, I think the discussion is important to have, but I think also um, knowing that you do have those options available to you is an important part of the discussion. Yeah, I may add something to you know, we, we're proposing a silt fence. We're proposing to do the work in accordance with all of the standard practices for doing work in a buffer zone. Realistically, in terms of interests of protecting the wetland resource area, which is here, even if we did have a failure of siltation barrier, we had some siltation across the line, we would have an issue with our butter, clearly. But there's a patio, a pool, a house, a driveway. In terms of potential yeah, adverse impacts to the wetland, um, it, it would have to it would have to plow over the house first to impact the wetland. We, you know, we're we are significantly removed from the resource area. But I mean, it doesn't go all the way across. We it understand. Doesn't go but all I mean, across, we, we can we have we, we, the wetlands. Have the wetlands here. Understand. Mm -hmm. understand. Is there a much higher I think we issued the negative three. Yeah, I think we can issue a negative three. I think this is this this is a this is a, a, a battle with the people on how they go. This is they're gonna have a different row than myself. Yeah, the courts. <laughs> this is a yeah, this is an opportunity. Because we can I mean these aren't even negative three, it's not like these are trees that like we would protect anyway. You know, we can completely understand the situation. But what is everyone else's feeling about this? Yeah, yeah I agree with Ernie. Just in the interest of where uh, uh, to protect it, it's not really that, uh, that issue here. Right. Yeah. I think there are different other avenues to go on this one. So if it's, it's an unfortunate it's extreme it's with you. Yeah, we, I would be happy um, to have the property. No, we can't. But it's, it's soft. It's beyond. It's beyond. Not, I think it's beyond us. Yeah. I kind of made a motion. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Negative three. Negative, negative, negative three. Negative three. Approve a negative three. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The negative three allows them to do the work without filing a notice of intent. Uh, it was was done. 
um, but to describe it to you, I don't think that there's any adverse impact to the focus with regard to mission. The um, project was to abandon an on site septic system and connect it to the town sewer. And so, what's shown in red on the plan is the, um, uh, the components of the sewer connection system. So, the wetland boundary. Uh, is on the opposite side of the Polywog Road, the opposite side of the paved road. None of the work occurred within the 50 foot buffer zone. It's all outside of the 50. And it was uh, the installation of a, a grinder pump and a low pressure sewer force main. Um, again, on the other side of the paved road, it connects to uh, the existing gravity sewer. Um, um, so that's the that was somehow came to light that um, they were should have filed the commission that had done the work for doing that. And I will before you tonight uh, ask if the uh, subsequent filing of notice of intent was not required uh, for the work. Yeah, so the work was inspected by the uh, sewer department. To me, this seems like work we would approve <coughs> if it had come yeah. before us. Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. Sure. I believe it would have been an RDA. Oh. Oh, there, was no, there were no waivers required. So I actually talked to Jeff about this when, before they filed it. Jeff and I kind of agreed that we felt, given its location, some things that RDA was sufficient for the work that occurred. Mm -hmm. Any uh, comments on the public on this one? So the recommendation, because the the form had it uh, for a positive two B that doesn't confirm the resource area boundaries, because it's from a, a budding lot in a different filing, but a negative three allowing for the work. I'd like to make that motion. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any passes? Thank you. And then we can go. <coughs> <coughs> Minor mod, 115 Washington Street Extension, LLC. 115 Washington Street. Yes. Sorry, this is another one that. What's that? I, I was reminding myself that I sent that via email. Sorry about that. Um, the one that Brian took, I feel like I could at least explain it here. Let's see on that. Um, for, for, So what they're looking to do on the drones are fairly close is to connect the permitted wooden boardwalk in a permitted patio to the series of bluestone pavers from the back to the front, but then also removing a section of boardwalk in between houses to and houses to those the changes from the hmm. original is this a duck pond? Yep, it's yeah. down by the duck pond. Yeah. Yeah. There's the two yeah. subdivisions yeah. side by side. Yeah. 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 That's what they're asking to do under the minor mod is just correct the landscaping plan. Turn around and park. So the three sets of yeah. walking <laughs> pavers and then the removal of the section. Gotcha. And the uh, questions? Is there any? No. So I'd like to make a motion. Move to approve the minor mod. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Starbuck Realty LLC, 44 Orange Landing Road. <laughs> They contemplated moving it on, but I would say Absolutely. trying to keep everyone sane and keeping some lighter edges as possible. Is it 44 Starbucks? Yeah, this is the 
lot up through here as well. Um, so what they're looking to do, just to kind of walk everyone through it, is to reconfigure the existing driveway by eliminating the second driveway that's coming off of Blue Heron Way that was originally permitted um, in, it, in its entirety, and then adjusting the square footage of the garage in the front of the house. So the garage here was originally permitted at 400 square feet, but that is adjusting to 480, and then the driveway that is completely down back here is being eliminated. <coughs> Driveway continued from the end here and came back out to connect out to the North Carolina way. So they are surveying the driveway to the two structures now. And they should. I like that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mm -hmm. get that footage right there. Can we get one through the 25? Before the auto comes. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions? No. No, excuse me. Interesting. Okay. So, I'm going to make a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That one passes unanimously. Certificates of compliance. God bless you. All right. So the first, the first certificate. He just said it. Uh, is the Chivalry Oyster <coughs> Restoration Project. Um, I know Leah sent in a pretty mm -hmm. extensive report mm -hmm. to go with that. Um, we'd say it was originally constructed in, in pretty good form, and time and tide has shifted some of the shell around a little bit um, and moved it around. Um, but I think we feel that it's in substantial compliance for, for what was there. I know it's kind of an ongoing site, um, but that order is also um, expiring as well. So um, I know it's a long report to read and you guys have been given a gajillion reports um, to read lately. Um, needless to say, I, I don't think we would have been looking to seek the certificate of compliance if we didn't feel that the site was in compliance. It is a site for kind of continued work that will come up to. So anything new outside of the original permitted scope would have to come back for permits. Mm -hmm. um, but I know our plan, we're kind of looking at a, another probably seven to ten years of, of monitoring and work on larval release in there. So I think that's a project that I know we're committed to taking to the end as far as what's going to come up. So. Um, We'll see. We did a bed thick study on there. It looks like some things are starting to come back in and having a little issue with sedimentation, but fines accumulating. It depends which part of the site that you're in, um, but that site can get anywhere up in the shallow end from, not to use the scientific terms of like shin deep at the, at the one end, but it, it gets anywhere from about, depending on the tide, from about two to three feet deep all the way out to about six to seven feet deep. And come to the deepest spots. So, <laughs> but I can't say they ended up. They ended up deploying on that site about sixty thousand pounds of oyster shell that they recycled to get out there to create that substrate. Um, a lot of interesting lessons were learned from that project about what was there and kind of what we've seen monitoring wise and water quality wise, and it's. Mm -hmm. And yeah. It's interesting. So if, if anyone wants more information, I'm happy to set up Leah to come in and give a separate presentation. She does it a lot. Very but interesting. It's, I like that. Oh, well, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we do them at, at SHAB and those kinds of things. So we can yeah. let people know when that's going to be there. But it's a, it's been a really 
good project for our staff because it's something that they learned a lot from and I think there are a lot of things that we would like to replicate and a lot of things that we may change some mm -hmm. information we'd like to collect on the front end a little bit more than what was recommended originally so um, it's good I think it's a good kickoff for a lot more work in other spots that may be a little bit more um, important than the, not to diminish Shimmel Creek but for other areas of applicability, whether it's Sacagawea Pond or mm -hmm. up in other parts of the harbor, Pulpus Harbor, for similar work to be put together a little bit differently that may be more successful quicker. But they're starting to see growth, so it's been pretty good so far. Yeah, that's good. Um, are we having um, okay. oh, so, so I can make a motion. Pippin's Way. Uh, Pippin's Way LLC, 15 Pippin's Way. You got two of the other ones. Okay. Two orders had been issued partial to the compliance a while ago, and since those partial certificates were issued, both properties have come in and have gotten new orders. So these orders are originally related to um, the demolition of the house and the moving off of the barn and the creating of the access to, to do those two. Um, I can tell you that all of those structures are relocated or gone or demolished and the access way is there and then like they said that we've had subsequent orders for permitting new structures there that are kind of underway and in various stages of permitting but we would recommend that the certificate of compliance on these can get issued as well. To this room. No problem. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that for both of them? Or just one? Uh, well, there's two different objects. So it's the same. No, it's the same address in the same project. They just ended up being split apart from an ownership change at one point, and also um, adding on a structure from one to the other. Um, yeah, so that's for both of them. Both issue both. Okay, good point. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We have a reissue to Martha Wells, 36 Low Beach Road. Yeah, they just are looking. This is SE 48369 that it was issued a very, very long time ago. So we're just invalidating the order of conditions because um, that's what happened before. I mean, 369, this would have been like early 80s. So it's it's been a while. So it just never made it to record. Second. All in favor? Aye. Passes unanimously. Where's the condition? Oh, one second. I don't get stack. Since I can't connect to the network, I'm actually going to have to edit on paper. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so this is the first one we closed tonight. I didn't put it in there, but uh, if you guys want to have some discussion, it's our normal kind of IA septic system provisions that are in there. Didn't know if you guys wanted to have some discussion over the request for the, the two or three bedroom thing. Yeah. This is the increase. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to agree that it was never proposed to critical area. And they have a functioning system right now, so truly <coughs> the, the reason the upgrade would be for the third step. I don't think we can uh, approve it. Mm -hmm. The addition, that's what we put against yeah, based it. On, yeah, based on that information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I like that up. So it was that number 18 is only a Um, yeah, I'd have to pull it back up to get the the exact language. I guess not to throw a monkey wrench into this, but it's my job to do this, so I'm going to ask the question: Is would you guys like to? I'm not saying to get rid of the condition or even change the spirit of it, but um, I know we also talk a lot about binding future commissions, and and, and I kind of appreciate that for what the conditions are at times. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to phrase it in some way? It's just my concern. You guys can totally tell me I'm crazy or you don't want to. Um, If something arose in the future that eliminated the impact of the septic system, whether it's a technology that removes it completely or sewer or any of those things, I know we've talked a lot about when we did the regulations at times, even for Barrier Beach, talking about best available technologies or doing some of those things. I, I think it may not apply in this case, but it's something that is definitely a discussion that's going to come up at some point as technologies have changed from the permitted condition where you've had a, mm-hmm. an absolute, if something changes along the way that could potentially do problem. that. Because I, I don't want to, I don't want to, lose the spirit of the condition because I, I, I totally hear what you're saying but I think having some thought of what could potentially or knowing because it it's weird to get kind of absolutes from a commission that was signing an order in the 90s in some cases it's, good. Yeah, I, it's just yeah, no, I it's the know. question that I know so, I'm going to get in the office <clears throat> or it's the question that's going to come up is so that condition was predicated on the technology that was available then. Right. I mean, I think it's just a valuable part well, to I discuss. Think that's a given. I think that's kind of a given to, to the next person who go, go around. It's going to say, well, if, if, the, if, the, if the concern is alleviated by some modern technology down the road, I think the board would know that. I mean, I think it would be different if the structure of the system was different. Yeah. Right, but it is historically there, but it seems to me that you right. right. But I, I think it's the addition of the extra paper. That's, that's well, he, and he'd be going good. up, but I mean. But either way, I think it's it's well, overuse in this area. You know, it's not necessarily just the septic. I'm not so much worried that construction is more of a bedroom. You're talking more people, people more demand for the right. system to. Right, but I, I just, think, say, if you say you had something, some type of a composting incinerating system that alleviated the whole threat to the wetland and stuff like that, I think that's what you're sort of getting at. But I mean, three bedrooms can be six people. Oh, yeah. You know, like it just, it's opening the door for something that, I don't know, I I guess the question I would ask is does this improved technology? make it better despite the extra bedroom or does it make it worse i mean if this actually improves the situation that could be a better then it might be a betterment but if it doesn't and uh i understand that you know this this is uh, one of those done deals that i don't know how it got permitted in the buffers in the first place unless it was already there and um well, it was there. Yeah. Yeah, it was so there. then it's, you know, it, pre- yeah, if it predates so the regs, then it's... Right, but then they, they allowed for the upgrade of the system, I think, once before. And in the upgrading the septic system, they said not to exceed two bedrooms. Right. But they upgraded. I mean, they did the same thing, for, you know, no, we're doing. already. They're, they were asked to upgrade the system so they could, you know, at which they did. And they still have a functioning system. That's the thing. If the system was in failure, I'd say, I, I get it. You know, we're upgrading technology. It's an improvement to the resource area because it's failing. But it's currently functioning. You know, so I don't... But does the new system achieve that? that, that the best work? Well, and I don't know. Would it, would it, right, exactly. I think would it increase that? <laughs> you know, would it make it the same? I mean, I don't know. I don't think we can. I don't, I don't think we can quantify that. No, exactly. I, can, I just think that we need to take what is the condition 
before with some six years of litigation. Yeah. There's a reason for it. And there's a reason for it now. I mean, I think that the potential of uh, adding third judges is increasing the use by it. And then if, even if it's going up and it's not square footage, then you have bedrooms and lights right over a vegetated wetland, you know, windows. So I, my feeling is they want it to stop deck upgrade, great, but we'd have to make a finding of still no, no bedroom addition. You know, I think that goes forward. So the exact condition reads, the septic system for the cottage on the property shall be limited to the flows allowed for a two bedroom dwelling. No expansion shall be allowed in the future. This condition shall be ongoing and not expire with the issuance of the certificate of compliance. That was the condition that they carried forward on the certificate of compliance. Yeah. So, would you guys want it to read like that? Yeah. I do appreciate the discussion. I think it's important to have because yeah. it yeah. strengthens the decision by having the background discussion on it too. So, pretty much says so even if you could put in a functioning four bedroom system, mm -hmm. this site is not okay for that. When you use that many bedrooms. Yeah, I mean especially if you get out of the contract or something, rental situation. Yeah, I, I think it's you pushing the site for sure. <clears throat> okay. So basically an approval approves the system but without the expansion of the order. No, so you would have a new condition 20. Can you read that, that, can you read that again? Yeah, so the, the, the condition okay. that's proposed is condition 20, the septic system for the cottage on the property shall be limited to the flows allowed for a two-bedroom dwelling. No expansion shall be allowed in the future. This condition shall be ongoing and not expire with the issuance of certificate of compliance. So it's the exact condition that was issued on page 20. Yeah, so I'm just saying yeah because it's related to the to the flows all right so it's tied to the flows so if some other technology comes in sewer comes that corrodes that's the reason well that's something that the nature commission can take up that thing it's a part of the approval yeah right i mean yeah right so i'd say keep it tied to the center yeah, I think so too. Why don't we just deny the order? Yeah. <laughs> well, they can still, but that leads them if they, if they still want to upgrade the system. That's always a plus too. They deny the order. Hmm? They come back with this first. Well, they're not proposing any expansion to the to the physical building at this point. They just right. ask for relief <laughs> from the condition. I know. <laughs> Well, if you guys well, don't get relief to the condition, I like the condition. I think the condition works fine. I mean, with the understanding down the road, if someone under this was sort of based on, well, based on occupancy for the site, but also the concern for the wetland. Well, what's up, then they can figure it out. I just know we need to have the discussion about it. Yeah, I look know. at the angles before. Oh, no, it's sorry. Complicated. sorry. So to make condition sure that, 20. So, yeah. That is condition 20. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. So, obviously, you have the application to get the other side of that. Yeah. So, I'm not sure if the order, if you just, you just deny the order, or I'm just not clear on where it's going. We would deny it. If, if, if the third bedroom is what they're after, then that, then they can't. Well, Sam, we're not going to upgrade. All right. We're not going to upgrade so, the well, here, here, so here's the rub, right? If you're going to deny, there's a couple reasons why you can deny, right? Is you can deny under not having enough information, which um, you closed the public hearing and said you had all the information. So that one's a little bit out the window. The other one is if the project can't be conditioned to meet the performance standards so if you can condition it by doing that you're kind of incumbent to do that if they don't want to do the project that they've permitted that's their choice but you guys have to condition it in a way that protects the resource area I think that issuing a denial in 
You have to explain your denial. You have to, yeah, you have to justify and have grounds for that denial. You guys have also the role to view things and condition it necessary to protect the order. If they propose the septic system and asking for relief for that condition, and you guys aren't granting relief from that condition, you would simply just do what you're doing and kind of rehash that condition. If they want to invalidate the order with right, certificate exactly. of compliance it, in yeah. two days, they can, they they can choose to do it, but yeah. I just... I think you guys would tie yourself in knots trying to come up with the conditions to deny an improvement on an existing septic system. Uh, if this were totally new, I think it'd be easy. But the fact that it already exists, I think, would make for a very convoluted denial. Yeah, Sometimes it would be like scratching your head. Mostly me. Yeah, I, I agree with Jeff. Putting these constraints in there on a future condition. They just have to say no thanks and right. it's gone. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, they have recourse as an applicant. I mean, they can let the appeal period run, record the order, and then apply for a certificate of compliance yeah. and validate the order, and it's it's filed and dead and gone. And then if they want to reapply, um, it's within their prerogative to do so. And I sort of think any expansion then has to be looked at as a, as the project to expand it, mm -hmm. and then we would look at that. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I mean, I think, you know, I've been on this commission for a long time and we, we really just don't constrain future condi conditions. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it doesn't work. I mean, all they have to do is say, yeah, we don't want to do that and, you know, and just not do it. So it's kind of a meaningless thing, really. I mean, I guess you get the sense of the commission, but... Well, I'd say in cases like this, right, and there's there's case law behind this, if the condition gets carried forward on a certificate of compliance, you're kind of obligated to meet that condition. If that condition had not been carried forward on the certificate, right, if, if that order that had that condition in it originally would have received a certification and they haven't filled in the number, that condition is dead, right? The case law behind that is pretty clear that if you don't carry it forward, it's you've issued complete certification, that permit is done and gone it's still out there and, and lingering so it carries forward so I think if the commission felt that conditions had changed where that condition could be overcome mm -hmm. I think you would want a finding in your order specific to mm -hmm. due to you know just as an example due to changes in technology and the reduction of the impact of wastewater from the house that we're you know, granting relief from the specific language of that condition and you'd have to have reasoning behind it um, but that's how I think we would probably recommend to you guys to do that if that was the case. So that condition, that condition is still ongoing, even with this new order. Well, we you would be rememorializing it into this order, essentially. But it would still be ongoing from the last one. Too. It's just showing it exists. Yeah. Right. It's some work. Someone wants to continue, like beach nourishment, yeah. ongoing to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. I just think. I mean, yeah. And then essentially, it's if the applicant doesn't want these records, it's only if it's on there. Yeah, I and mean, they if they have a funding access, they can say, well, it's whatever's whatever. We just got a permit that we don't want to do. So, but that's their decision to make. They could just decide to do the system anyway. So. <laughs> Want to make a motion as amended? Yeah, move this year as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Pass it unanimously. Thank you. The head golf club. All right. So. Eight eighteen. We closed this at the last regular meeting. Um. No, Talked a lot about these areas. This is Virgin Hagopian's uh, application for the uh, King Kong version of the Wilkinson array. So, the King Kong version of the Wilkinson array. So, just some highlights from what you guys had is I called out at the end. So, if 
most of the findings are that same that we talked about yesterday, so I want to prove why we're calling things significant. Um, condition 13, if you guys requested that this specific makeup configuration materials as a coastal engineering structure, is finding number 13. Um, and then condition number 14 is a finding that the structures of a lot of pre-1978 structures are eligible for the use of the coastal engineering structure. So just wanted to make sure that we got that criteria mm -hmm. crossed off. Um, to run through, there's the normal condition 16. We have a letter from uh, Natural Heritage that had some conditions um, that we'll just attach their letter to because, to be honest, I don't ever feel like retyping their like page and a half of the wordiest conditions ever. Um, going through, there were a couple other changes that we added in. <coughs> Same planting ones, we have water staked. Those, there's the uh, 21 day requirement to bring the structure back into compliance in being damaged. And then all existing debris on the coastal beach shall be removed prior to or during installation. Debris uncovered at a later date will also be removed after providing notice to the commission. I think we need something that requires an annual contribution because this is mitigation sand. It's not just to recover their structure. And, you know, again, we go back to that whole thing of, well, we lost this much this year, so that's all we have to put back. But then they get the big year and they lose everything. We would have lost a whole lot more. We never know, and it never gets put <clears throat> back. So we have to have a minimum annual requirement. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I think they're in agreement with that too. I think they're just where they they're put it. We just what is the volume? Of? They don't, I don't remember. We don't know volume. I'd have to look. I mean, you could certainly add a condition at the end. I mean, we could do a thirty-nine that the nourishment volume shall be the nourishment volume provided shall be provided on an annual basis at a minimum. Yeah. Do we have to quantify that though? Well, it's in the application. No, I don't think it was. No, he gave it to us in testimony. Yeah, I thought so too compared to what we're talking about for Scott's. Because we, we had a long It's a lot lower. It is a lot. I know. Oh, yeah, I know yeah. it's a lot lower. But right. Right. It still seems. I think that's because we're bank right. Right, the bank yeah. is a lot lower in this location. Um, can we pull that up somewhere, Jeff? I am actively uh, with our internet. terrible internet. I'm actively seeking. <laughs> All right. How are you downloading? <laughs> actively seeking the number. <laughs> it quits on me all the time. <laughs> uh, I may actually have to mine it out of. Terry's minutes. Well, here, the, the other choice is if we're looking for that number, instead of actively looking on it, not to keep adding to our woes, we have till next Wednesday to issue this order. If you guys want that number specifically, we could mine it out and add it, and then you guys can. Average erosion rate of 686 cubic yards of sand per year. You win the prize. Oh. That's for how long? Good for Get the tech that works. At uh, sand per cubic year. So, so it's, uh, what is that? Well, that was, that's the, that was the total amount that they yeah, calculated. It was about 30 foot long, wasn't it, or something like that? So that's the average of 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 the average
compared to what we're looking at in Wisconsin. I'd say it should be more like very great notes. I mean, we're talking about 20 pivots. Yeah, so this is this is about a third of the height. So I'd say it should be like seven yards per foot. Right, I think you're right. You just said seven or eight. Okay. I mean, it's going to be per year. Per year. Yeah. Should be held to the same standard. I mean, it's the same as well, basically. Yeah, they should definitely be held to the same standard. Yeah. So, what is that? So, based on the height, is that we could do? Well, I, I think before we try to do it on the on the run and on the napkin, yeah. <laughs> I think if you guys are if you guys are looking for that number within the same safety factor as the project to the south, we will figure it out, provide you the math that goes with it, and then on issue, paper, not a napkin. Correct. So everyone can see how it breaks down for the length, and that's there since that's okay. the number we have on the file. Sure. And then, then we can I will stop my panic answer. sweats about trying to figure it out right with seven people trying to figure out what that number is. When I think we prorate it based on the height of the bank comparison, yeah. which I thought was about a third as tall. Yeah. Well, if that's the information you, you guys want for that condition, we'll yeah. Yeah. we'll put together the math. Great, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Volume change per profile. Yeah, it'll be 16 million. Sorry, because there's another condition that you guys had wanted on this that I application. I did memorialize some cheetahs. You want some cheetahs? Do you want to hold that for you? Just squint and keep that away. I can make it bigger. It's not funny. We also have a beach. Probably doesn't need to grow as Yeah. As well, it's I, mean, I agree, but I mean, it's, it's they disgusting. lost the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, I know. Married. It's amazing. He was like, well, we're supposed to get married out there. And now we're getting married <laughs> back here. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, so we're waiting on this one until when? The, the 12th. Okay. Okay. Then I can fix that and have that figured okay. out. Okay, fine. Two uh, blocks. Four, oh, four, 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 another good one. That's Every right. This is really this is the end of the heavy lifting for the night. Two blocks. Four. All right. So we closed this one last time. Yep. Um, with some fireworks. Um, <laughs> So I'll, I'll just walk you through this one because there's some stuff that uh, we haven't really used too many times before. Uh, so the, the findings are all, all, the first one is our normal NHASP one, but then these are the findings I put together from kind of the minutes last time that the commission finds that the relocation and renovation of the existing home, construction of the deck, construction of the patio, insulation of the retaining wall all occurred with no valid order of conditions for that work. It's just again, yeah, just to kind of run through the statements of facts here. Next one, the commission finds that given the current resource area delineations and structural locations that waivers would have been required for that work. So that's just looking at the plan, that's the case. Four, the commission finds that the resource area restoration work within current lawn areas will serve to mitigate the impacts associated with the unpermitted work. Just to kind of yeah. package it all together. And then as we go through the conditions that go with that, there's our all plantings on that site shall be native with no cultivars. Um, I did call out with the exception of the planted beds directly adjacent to the structure. So this is the flower beds right next to the house. That's there. Um, all fertilizer, pesticide, and herbicide have to be reported. Um, all irrigation used in establishing the start area shall be temporary and removed upon establishment. And then our newer condition that prior to the start of work, the applicant needs to file an agreement that demonstrates that a contractor has been engaged to perform the vegetation restoration and management that includes monitoring and any replanting for the full term of the permit. Shall include a performance bond or similar covering the cost of restoration or monitoring. <coughs> this is where we change a little bit. Failure to sorry, you know, failure to start this portion of work or have an agreement in place within three months of issuance will result in a public hearing to revoke this permit in accordance with Town Nantucket Bylaw Chapter 136, Section 4E. This time may be extended by written request to be approved by the commission. 
And then I added in, should revocation of this permit happen, the applicant shall be fined a $50 a day penalty dated back to the original enforcement action issued by the commission on 8-10-2016. So like that. there's that one. And then the rest of the stuff is pretty normal. Uh, we do have 26, 27, 28, and 29, which are new. 26, a final planting layout shall be filed with commission staff for review and approval because we had talked about it last time and they were going to do some adjusting. Applicants shall schedule a site inspection at the beginning and end of each growing season with commission staff for the life of the permit. So that's on them to call our office and say, we would like to schedule our inspection. It's the beginning of the growing season. Please come look. 28, the applicant shall present a yearly report, including photographs at a regularly scheduled meeting with the Conservation Commission for the life of the permit. So once a year, they'll be back in front of you saying, this is what we are looking at. And then 29 is one that given kind of the history here, any further violation on this site during the life of the permit will be caused for a hearing to revoke this permit with the penalty as described in additional condition 22. So if you violate the rules again in that time, you come in front of the hearing, the commission revokes the permit, you're suffering the penalty back to the initial date of enforcement. So to me, I think it, <clears throat> You leave with the slamp on the wrist for the, the work that you did without the permit. You get the restoration, but then you also have the Executioner's Act behind you if you decide not to comply. Mm -hmm. So that $50 fine is from the original part of the town code that allows for a $50 a day penalty. So that's what we're legally allowed to issue as a per day penalty. We're not going crazy like there's six violations or whatever it is. Uh, I will tell you that one, one year under $50 a day is $18,250. So whenever that happens, if that revocation were to happen another year from now, you're going back in time. So if you're still waiting to, to deal with it, so if you violate it, you are... There could be action taken on their behalf to, to, to deal with that too, and they can obviously have due process to that. So... Um, it's just some additional incentive to yeah. stay to walk, the line. to walk the line and complete it and not do crazy things like put in fences or chicken coops mm -hmm. or wells or move houses again without getting permits. Did they finally remove that chicken? It's right the last time I saw the chicken coop it was sitting in the, the front yard. Wow. Up by the river. <laughs> Well, I think that's I think that's why we we put the the site visits one and then put in the monitoring that if it looks like they're not surviving appropriately, you guys still can take action on there. <laughs> so you can put ongoing conditions forward, like I said earlier. I mean, I don't think at that point we'd be recommending, obviously. You know, if they've complied and we just want to do monitoring, you would probably let some of the other penalties go, like the performance bonding one with, with that, that you just would maintain kind of a yearly report. And then when you wanted to release them from that, you certainly could. So, absolutely. Sorry. I mean, have an agreement in place within three months of issuing. Is that automatically going to stay in the Yes. You don't have to say that. Um, I'd be happy to put it in there if you'd ever want to feel better about that. I just. Would you feel better about it? So why don't we rephrase it to say of work or have an agreement in place within three months of issuance or within three months of the ends of any appeal? And then. So they gave us a narrative, I think, just some sort of sketch plan that we can all go back and reference specifically. So you wanted the narrative, like, like, on the plan? Yeah. Okay. Because that way we have something to look back at later to make sure that we're still okay. in I compliance. Think, I think. But I think, yeah. So Brian, put Brian's narrative on Dan's plan. I don't even think it has to be as formal as the Dan's plan, <clears throat> but there's something on there that it kind of is a key. So if you and I disappear tomorrow, 
that someone can look at you can still it. I know. Someone <laughs> could look at it and say, oh, beyond the narrative, these are the plants that are supposed to be here. And okay. then they can check. So okay. it right. gives us a good way to go back with the landscapers too and check it off that they've planted what they're supposed to plant. Right. Doesn't take too much time to put on paper. So you're going somewhere tomorrow. So sometimes yeah, I wish. Okay. Well, as long as I disappear before the twelfth, we're all good. <laughs> Would someone like to make a motion? Amend it. Move the issue as amended. Second. All those in favor? Uh, uh, hopefully, this ends the long know. saga of. Never even had a chance. Two brass court. Should hear a rock's court. Yeah. Well, that's why all of the, the triggers bring everyone back in front because that way, if something weird Plus happens, yeah. yeah. Plus, this is the enforcement <laughs> action. <laughs> that's, that'd be the, that'd be the only thing we don't do that. But. So I want to be sure people understand the message. If you do uncommitted work, you, could, you do have to pay the piper at some point. Mm. Oh, sorry. That's a good garage. Yes. This was the one out on Eel Point Road that was for the garage and driveway. Um, that was back in kind of the back corner of the lot outside of 50 feet for the garage and outside of 25 for the, the driveway. Compared to the last two, there are far fewer conditions. Yeah. Any thoughts? Anyone happy? Yep. 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 Motion is drafted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any votes? Passed unanimously. Seventy-seven Pacamo LLC. Seventy-seven Pacamo. This was just the pool and patio. Yep. So just to kind of run through really quickly, this is our normal conditions for pools, but though in the findings, there is a finding that we have to include. So building and zoning, see it? But the dwelling deck, shed, and septic system are located outside of jurisdiction. Because if we don't include them on the order when they get it for their building permits, the building permit, they get all weird about it. So um, other than that, it seemed pretty Mm -hmm. make a motion. Issue is drafted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passing unanimously. And. Eric Pesasante. 41 Long Pond Drive. This was the, the shed in place of the shed with mm -hmm. that shed going outside of the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. With the inland bank. So there is a finding of this one too. That lot does contain land subject to storm flow, which is a well, but it is the project isn't with it. So this is drafted. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passing unanimously. Okay. Extension request. Pocomo neighbors, 47, 53, 55, 57, 61, 63, 67, 69. Various on the road. Before the applicant, I guess, Bob, um, we are asking for a one year extension of the, um, of the order um, and not for three one year extensions, just to, um, as you're as we aware from the reporting we've done, um, the entire project hasn't been installed. There's essentially a gap with two members in the middle and not yet put that in. And so, um, I think that the overall group may not have realized the uh, expiration was coming up and they all kind of talked over the summer and we'll give them the opportunity to collectively discuss the project and uh, figure out whether or not they can finish that or come back to Parker or what's going to happen. Uh, so that's on the extension. And then I have some comments I would be want on the overall project. So um, I sorry I missed the site visit on Monday. I, I didn't realize that I had anything on the agenda, so I just wasn't there for the site visit. Or I would have attended. But I do recall from the last meeting we said that you were still there. I went back out there and I saw the sprinklers that you've seen. What I did was I actually physically moved the sprinklers so that they can't. I don't know whether they've been on or off. I don't know who's irrigation system. You know, but I think they're connected to Sparrows and it was all associated with the planting that had been done that we've been made aware of. Try to meet you know, some of those concerns for the end of the project. So um, I, I moved those away. Um, so 
so that they're not going to continue to, to spray down there. And I have a call at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning with Sam. He's done all of the work. And uh, to discuss with him uh, whether he can get, and I think a couple guys with shovels can get that cleaned up. I don't think you want to be getting more machinery or more delivery you know, at this time of year. I think that can kind of touch that up and then kind of wash down some of the soil where the set of stands. I think it's just going to take some, some hand labor. Steps on that. So, yeah. I wonder if we should. Um, well, I wonder. Yeah, if, if, you know, sign, signs are, but maybe uh, just a, a small little bit of a post might be more effective. But why don't I? I can't. You know, but yeah, I can, no, I'll discuss that with you, with Seth, and then I'm going to have a follow-up call um, with with the group. Um, As well, um, I noticed, you know, today that, you know, as you recall, we, we had put some straw waddles on the path for the runoff of the water, and they're working, as you can see, and I'm going to suggest this up tomorrow that a little bit of maintenance needs to be done, because there's been some accumulated sediment on the uphill side, which, you know, just demonstrates that, in fact, you know, they're, they're serving the purpose, and I think the old days are real. Uh, the loss of sand this time was from, the, you know, the sprinkler head that it just, Kind of lumped over, and I think we can discuss whether those are needed at all anymore. Um, and in that area, the, you know, the sand delivery and the things we planted. So, 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 not only though, like that, like the delivery location where the like hose was hooked up to the sprinklers, was it two separate stairs down? You could see that either there was a broken irrigation head or something was causing funny drainage under. The stair oh, set, yeah, the stair um, where it was undermining, the mid um, and it was hard to say whether it was like an irrigation or, or whether it was simply surface runoff. runoff. You know, yeah. they, they, a lot of times you see that at regular <coughs> sets of beach stairs, <coughs> a place that was disturbed with installation, and then you know you don't get vegetation that typically grows, so you will get some shallow, concentrated, you know, runoff that does often happen. So a lot of have, have a look at that spot too to be sure, you know, whether there's something. Now the other side, of course, is some runoff carrying a little bit of sediment isn't the worst mm -hmm. either. It's just part of contributing you know, some sediment to the system as well. We're not seeing again the monitoring as is required. I don't know if you know, you know the cobble of the beach. You know, it doesn't seem to be too much nourishment. Um, you know, it, it's still a, the characteristics. I don't believe have changed from pre-construction to post-construction with respect to. To, to the form and the composition of the beach. I mean, that's gonna look pretty good. It does. It's gonna <coughs> feel good. So you do have the extension request for the request for a one year extension in front of you. Okay. Is the issue the one year extension? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Right. Good. Thanks. I'll get back to Jeff. Yeah. About the spring. Okay, cool. Perfect. Uh, approval of minutes. Everyone happy? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, are we supposed to motion to approve the minutes? If you could, since there's two, just someone could move to approve the minutes of <laughs> 520 and 522. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Oh, sorry, we don't have any this time. Mana, excellent. Horseman actions? Don't have any this time. Right. I'm busy with writing orders with doing any things. Any reports? CPC, NPC, Mosquito? Nope. Commissioner comments? Social. <laughs> 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 Administrative staff reports. Data. Nope. Motion to adjourn. I'll move. Aye. Oh, wait.